Hello, class. Today we're going to discuss the importance of grammar in language learning and two approaches to teaching grammar in the classroom. As the text we're reading mentions, grammar is the backbone of any language, and it is essential to have a good understanding of the grammar rules of English in order to communicate effectively. As English teachers, it is our responsibility to help our students acquire language skills, and this includes teaching grammar. However, there are different approaches to teaching grammar, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. The first approach we'll discuss is the deductive approach. This is the more traditional approach that most students are familiar with. In this approach, the teacher presents the grammatical rules and structures first, and only then do the students apply those rules through a variety of exercises. For example, if the lesson is focusing on the present perfect tense, the teacher would outline the uses and rules of this tense, and then the students would be asked to practice the rules through exercises. In this approach, the class is very teacher-directed, with the teacher presenting and explaining all new materials. While this approach may be effective for higher-level students who already have a good understanding of the basic structures of the language, it may not be suitable for lower-level students and younger learners who are trying to grasp complex grammatical structures. The second approach is the inductive approach, which represents a more modern, student-centered approach to language education. In this approach, the grammatical rules and structures are presented to the students within a meaningful language context. The students learn the use of the target structures through practice of the language in context and later are asked to identify the rules from the practical examples. For example, if the structure to be presented is the comparative form, the teacher might begin the lesson by drawing a figure on the board and say this is Bill. He is tall. The teacher would then draw another figure and say this is Ted. Ted is taller than Bill. The teacher would then provide many more examples using the students, pictures, or items in the classroom, to develop students' understanding of the structure. The students are asked to repeat after the teacher, and then they practice the structures in pairs or groups. After meaningful practice, the students are given worksheets which lead them to identify the rules for themselves. In this approach, the role of the teacher is to provide meaningful contexts to demonstrate the grammatical rules, while the students develop their understanding of the rules through examples and practice. The advantage of the inductive approach is that students can focus on the use of the language without being held back by grammatical terminology and rules that can inhibit fluency. The inductive approach also promotes increased student participation and practice of the target language in meaningful contexts, which should be the aim of all EFL classes. However, some students who are used to more traditional teaching styles in the classroom may initially find this approach difficult. Therefore, it is important to gradually build students' confidence through carefully graded practice to ensure student success. In conclusion, both approaches are effective in teaching grammar, and as English teachers, we should choose the approach that best suits our students' needs. It is important to keep in mind that grammar is essential in language learning, and it is our responsibility to help our students acquire the language skills they need to communicate effectively. Thank you for listening.